Fiorello, the 149th, you have the floor, Madam. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, just a comment through you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I, I'm listening to the uh, debate has been very enlightening, and I just want to add to this debate that um, wind and solar only run one third of the time during the day. And so this, this policy that Connecticut is going to go towards will require huge investments in batteries. And batteries are environmentally devastating. The mining that has to happen in batteries is in some of the poorest countries of our world. And in solar, there are no components for solar made in the United States. In fact, they're all made in China. And uh, nuclear, I'm really grateful for uh, the proponents' comments on nuclear, uh, but nuclear in the state of Connecticut is not considered one of our class one renewable energy. It's regulated by the federal government. Uh, it would take a lot longer for us to ramp up our nuclear energies, and the technologies are still developing. I, I don't understand why we would take on this bill and signal that we want to build a Connecticut economy based on parts and sources and materials, components made by our enemy states, uh, China and Afghanistan, using um, slave labor. I, I think that this bill is a kind of fantasy. It's uh, an insult to the intelligence of the people of Connecticut. It's uh, an insult to all the businesses that have to run here. Um, I am, did not come here to, to engage in this kind of um, la-la land bill making. Um, I'm completely opposed to this, and I hope we can get to uh, some real business. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. We mark for the bill. Representative Hughes of the 135th, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to affirm this body's commitment to following the public will to do substantive action on climate change. Yes, we need to set the goals. And yes, we probably need to disrupt the status quo because we have deliberately designed and disinvested in public transportation and low carbon emissions for decades as if we have an infinite planet to inhabit, as if the biodiversity hasn't uh, plunged into catastrophic levels that have rippling impacts, yes, for our generation, but especially for our children, as so many of my colleagues have pointed out. If we do nothing, then we are signaling also that the status quo and the ca catastrophe that is upon us is acceptable, and it is not acceptable. Is this enough? It is not enough, but it is at least following the public will that we must do something. We must declare that this is a climate emergency that we're in and that we must take urgent action. I don't care if it's a short session. I don't care if it's an election year. Uh, we're already too late in a rapidly closing window. The IPCC climate report was, was uh, released during this session, and it said we had very, very little time to act to avoid the catastrophic change that is, that is happening around us. I believe we need to change our lifestyle, our economy, so that uh, we do that hard investment fast and pivot to renewable energy to uh, low carbon emissions, maybe not so car centric, um, you know, convenience that we've enjoyed for so long. And maybe we do need to figure out how we are going to um, sustain a society that's not based on ch cheap fossil fuel as we have had in the past decades. We need a new economy. Uh, this is a goal. It's the penalties are not money, but uh, diminished inhabitability of the, pen, uh, of the planet and diminished species and diminished uh, health that we can enjoy. And I believe that we must pass this and many more bills that build on our goals strategically. And we must make that investment now that we have ignored for so many decades. And so I urge adoption and I urge building on this bill 
to pass many more bills that pivot hard to a climate neutral, carbon-free economy and future. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, madam. We are for the